time uh, for Father's Day celebration. Uh, we are in the book of Judges. For those that are listening, and again, we welcome those who are here uh, watching on Facebook. We are grateful to you for uh, showing up on a day like this in a special, special focus on fathers. Uh, today, the passage in Judges chapter 13 to understand the passage, the piece of the passage that I have pulled uh, out, directed by the Holy Spirit to do so, uh, is a recognition of a man and a wife uh, who are without child. They are, uh, the Bible doesn't give us the woman's name, but it gives us the man's name, and his name is Manoah. And he is uh, comforting his wife in the moments that we precede our text today. And one day, God sends an angel. That angel talks to, to uh, Manoah's wife and says, By the way, I know that you're barren, but one of these days you are going to become pregnant, and that you're going to have a son, and that. He must be, he must follow uh, the very important Nazarite rites, which means that he has to be careful about what he eats. And no matter what, he has to be careful about what he drinks. It says he must not drink wine or any other alcoholic drink, nor eat any forbidden food. They could not. Give him a haircut. Come on, somebody. They could not give him a haircut. That would be a problem for a few of us around here today. They could not give him a haircut. I'm going to leave that alone. He said in verse number five, you will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and his hair must never be cut, for he will be dedicated to God as a Nazarite from birth. He will begin to rescue Israel from the Philistines. She was so happy as she uh, heard this great news, this news about the fact that this barren woman would now become pregnant. And I know that this is an obscure passage to many, but she ran home and she told her husband, and a man of God appeared to me. If you're following along with me, it's in verse number six. Uh, of the 13th chapter, and I'm reading from the NLT. Uh, she said that he appeared to me and he looked like one of God's angels. Terrifying to see. I didn't ask where he was from, and he didn't tell me his name. But he told me, you will become pregnant and give birth to a son. You must not uh, drink wine or any other alcoholic beverage or even eat any forbidden food for your son will be dedicated to God as a Nazarite from the moment of his birth until the day of his death. Then, then Manoah start praying. Y'all, y'all, I, I, I want you to see the drama in this. No, Noah heard his wife. You understand. He wasn't sure what she had before she start talking to him. All right, I'll just stop for a minute. You understand. There are times when we wonder, is that person okay? Is everything all right? How could you come up with something like this? And uh, he, he, he prayed to the Lord, the Bible says. And when he prayed to the Lord, he said, Lord, please let the man of God come back to us again and give us more instruction about this son who is to be born. And I want to share with you this morning, this is a father trying to get it right. This is a father trying to get it right. Let us pray. Oh, God, we come. We thank you for this moment. We thank you for our time together. We thank you for the power of your spirit, which is all over this place. We pray never to take you for granted. And thank you for loving us so much. And that no matter what, Lord, what you're doing at all times and in all ways is giving us an opportunity to grow and to develop even greater as it comes to our work and our word. We thank you for loving us, keeping us, blessing us, guiding us in every way. Now, I pray, dear God, that you will clear the atmosphere of anything but you. I pray for the power of your word to be so strong. And I pray 
that no matter what, Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the hearers, and we thank you uh, for the messenger. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 My friends, as we look at this passage, we must remember that as this passage unfolds, it reminds us that when we are in position, and I must tell you that Manoah's wife and Manoah himself were very, very concerned about why it is that his wife could not have child. And many of you know that from the culture of much of what we know about the Bible, a woman was not fully a woman in the eyes of many around her when she was barren, when she did not have child. There are people, and we know of many passages of Scripture where the woman who is not able to have the child is literally like Hannah. She is literally talked about and scourged by those around them because they see her as less than because they could not have a child. Many of us know, by the way, that in Hannah's situation, the mother of Samuel, that not only did she, was she barren, but the other wives uh, really gave her a hard time. And one day she prayed and said, God, when you give me this child, I will give that child back to you. And that happened to be Samuel, and that's what she did. And we see in the passage how she sang and praised God for what he did. In this case, my friends, we're talking about uh, somebody that you've heard in Scripture before, but you may not have heard anything about his dad, and that's Manoah. This happens to be the mother and the father of Samson. Many of us have heard the story of Samson and Delilah. Uh, a amen. Don't, 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 don't act like you haven't heard that story particularly before. Uh, but, but, but what we see here is that Manoah wants badly to get it right. What he wants to know is exactly what are the instruction, exactly what we must do, exactly what the man of God said, the angel that God sent. I want to get it right. And indeed, there may have been a reason why he wanted to work so hard at getting it right because he may have known something about the history of Abraham and Abram, rather, and Sarai when they had heard that they were going to be pregnant at a much uh, advanced age, and they, at some point in their life and their relationship, they were waiting on God to do his thing. But you know, sometimes God is slow. Come on, come on now. And, and by the way, even today, sometimes we get discouraged about what we believe that God has planned for us, but God just isn't moving fast enough. You, you understand. Uh, Manoah may have heard that you know, they ended up taking things into their own hands. And you and I both know that's one of the worst things you can do. If God has promised you something, it requires a certain amount of patience and ability to wait for God to do what God is going to do. Do I have a witness here any, anywhere? Because what you know is that when God does it, it's going to be all right. He may have heard that they went on and they uh, decided to take it into their own hands. And I hear Manoah over these centuries saying, you know what, I don't want to make the same mistake that others have made. So I, I know my wife is a good woman. I know she's a great lady and all that stuff. And what she has told me about what the person of God has had to say, I'm just saying I want to get this thing. Y'all don't hear me. I, I want to get this thing right. I, I, I want to I work at it. I want to understand it. I want to get the instructions right. And indeed, ultimately what he says is, Lord, will you just do us a big favor? Will you bring that dude back here one more time? And, and part of that is because you see Manoah's from Missouri. Uh, 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 for those that don't understand that, those who are from Missouri these days or those who know the story know that if you're from Missouri, it's called the what state? There you go, show me state. And indeed, what he is trying to do is say, I hear you, I believe you, I love you, but, but you got to show me something because, <laughs> because, because you know, I, I, I'm just having a hard time with this and I want to get it right. What we see as we look at the text as the text unfolds, that God sends the man back. He sends the angel back. 
But guess what? If you look at the text, God has a sense of humor. He brought the man back. He brought the angel back, but Manoah wasn't even around. Y'all don't hear me. One more time, God sends the angel to the one who's going to have the child. I, I, I love him because it shows he's got a wonderful sense of humor. He says, I'm going to do exactly what you asked me, but I'm going to send her right back, send him right back to your wife. And as we look at the text, what we see is an amazing and dazzling picture of the power of God and what he can do, but also we see ourselves sitting in the midst of what Manoah is going through. Now, what Manoah did not know and could not know is that his son would be rise up to be a powerful and wonderful and amazing leader of God's people that he would indeed make mistakes like everybody does. Come on now. A amen belongs right there. And in fact, he should not just be remembered for his worst mistake. He ought to be uh, remembered for his greatest triumph. But Manoah can't know anything about that yet because it's not time for him to know that. But we see Manoah really saying, Lord, I want to get it right. Lord, help me understand the instruction. Help me understand what I need to do. Help me understand how to help my wife raise this boy. Help us, Lord. And I think about that, if I can pause for just a minute and say, for those of us in the 21st century, that ought to be a clarion call for every father. Lord, will you help me get it right? Do I have a witness here today? Every parent, can I get it right? Help me to get it right. In other words, I've messed up before. I've done wrong before. I have not followed your instructions before. There are times when I haven't done a horrible job, but I've done a bad job. Do I have, do, do I have a witness here somewhere? I just want to get it right. He's saying that, Lord, I love you this much. I believe in you this much, and I don't want to make any mistake when it comes to this because whether it's me or whether me watching some of my relatives or my friends, I realize that sometimes mistakes will be made and sometimes you can't come back from them. And it's very important that we really work at our relationship and know that the God that we serve is an amazing and mighty God. Is he not? Isn't he an amazing and a mighty God? I want to get it right. I want to hear the instruction again. And while I trust my wife and I believe in my wife, I would like to hear it from the angel that you have sent. God had a different plan. And God's plan is the plan that is going to always supersede your plan and my plan. But if I could say something to us as men in the 21st century, I would say that there are too many people that have written us off, partly for those of us who are black men in particular, brown men in particular, people have written us off as not worth it and don't waste your time. But I came to tell you today, men, I want you to keep on going. I want you to stand in. I know that you're going to mess up sometimes. I know that people are going to be upset sometimes. I know that our wives will look at us like we are crazy. And women, if you are dating right now, I want you to know, Yep, he's going to mess you up sometimes. Yes, you're going to be upset with him sometimes. But you go on and hang in there. If God says, somebody didn't hear me. Somebody didn't hear me. If God says, not we say, but God says, hang on in there with him because I'm going to get him right after a while. Do I have a witness here? The reality of where we deal with today, what we deal with today is that too often times we as men are not going to God, we're going to self. I'm going to try it one more time. Y'all didn't catch that, and I don't want you to catch it on the way home. It is important that we have a relationship with God. It's great that the text tells us that she had a relationship with God, but the text also tells us, because I didn't see anywhere in the text where it says that Manoah called on God and God said, huh. Okay, y'all catch that one on the way home as well. In other words, he had a relationship with him, so he knew how to call on God. He knew how to ask God and wanted to hear God's voice. And in the 21st century, my friends, even in the city of Portland, a city that has only 1% of the population that's 18 to 35 
and black or brown male, we, we make up 40 to 50 to 60% of the people dying on our streets. And what we need to know is that we need God. Do I have a, do I have a witness here? We need God. And I don't care how old-fashioned it becomes. We need God. And we need to be willing to let people know, I know I've messed up. And I know that you don't have any faith in me. But i got news for you. There is a God who's got faith in me. And as much as I keep going down the wrong road, I promise you, one of these days I'm going to get it right. And I'm going to get it right so that I... I know that he knows that I'm working at it and I'm going to get it right. Now, you may never give me a second chance. You may never believe in me, but I do know that my God believes in me and I know that I can depend on him. Do I have a witness here somewhere? Ladies, ladies, I want you to know that if you've got a man and if you know that God has given you that man, you need to stick with that dude. I know that he's hard-headed and pitiful sometimes, but you need to learn how to stick with him. And here's the thing. Too many women are trying to tear down their men, and that's why, first of all, we got a bad self-esteem in the first place. Don't think that much of ourselves because of what we deal with in the world. And what we need from you is not for you to tell us how pitiful and awful we are. We need you to talk to us about the potential you believe that we have and talk to God. If you don't have the words, go talk to the Lord and ask him to give you the words because what we need is encouragement, not discouragement. Do I have a witness here this morning? It is important that we remember that this thing is never going to get any better as long as we stand on the outside of a relationship with God. I want you to know that I know it's hard, and I know what it's like to deal with people who are hard-headed and pitiful, and every time you turn around, they're messed up. But here's what I do know, that prayer is still stronger than anything that comes out of any one of our mouths. Do I have a witness here? And I know we want to try to straighten up everything. We want to let somebody know just how bad they are and how upset we are and all that kind of stuff. You can go on and say that because that's real and important, but I want you to also end it in the same way David ended his relationship his conversation with God in Psalm 109. He told the Lord, look, these folks are bugging me. They're getting on my nerves. They're talking about me in ways that I don't like. Lord, I want you to get rid of all of them. In fact, get rid of their children. That, that David said that. I, that, that. That's not Hennessy chapter 4, verse 3. That's Psalm 109. But he ended it by saying, Lord, I believe in you. I trust in you, and I've gotten that off my chest now. Will you go on and take care of the problem that is before me? And for every one of us today, it is important that we realize that if we really want to get it right, it doesn't mean that we can't say what we want to say. It doesn't mean that we've got all this pin up inside of us and we're not saying anything. The reason why you're not saying anything is because you don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. Well, here's what I know is that if you don't say it, the cancer is going to grow in you and it shows up in other ways because people will say, why is that person so hard to get along with? What? All I said was good morning. Come on, somebody. But the reality is we've got, to, we've got to start there. We just can't stay there. Do I have a witness here? We can't stay there. We've got to be able to get to the point where we say, all right, now I've got that off my chest. I'm done with it. And by the way, you know what our problem is often is that five years from now, we still want to bring up the same stuff. How did, how did I get that far afield? Let, let, let me, ooh. What we need to remember is that if we give it to God, leave it with him. If we give it to God, we need to trust him. And rather than ball out somebody, why don't you go to God and pray about that person? Why don't you? I've said to too many wives, girlfriends, all that kind of stuff. I've said, y'all need to pray for them. That's the more powerful thing to do. Pray for them. Look what Manoah did. Manoah didn't pull her aside and say, you know what? I think you're a little crazy. I think we need to, to put you over there in the crazy house because I can't believe that this happened. He went to the Lord. The text reminds us, always go to the Lord. Always wish to get it right, not based on who we are as human beings. Get it right based on who God as spirit is. And in every one of our lives, I want us to remember that we may not be able to see what it is that God is doing 
But what we know is God is always up to something good. Do I have a witness here? He is always up to something good. And I recognize that even when we go through darkness, we go through issues that are difficult, we go through a lot of these kind of things and we wonder, what is God doing? Remember, the Bible says he does all things well. And I know I've been in position, you have been in position where you almost want to lose your mind because it seems like every time you try to do everything right, here comes stuff to blow your life up. Here comes people to try to remind you what you used to be. And I need you to know that you need and I need a constant, intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. And when you have that relationship, people can say what they want. People can get as upset with you as they want to. There's a peace inside you that lets you know that you may not be able to see it right now, but one of these days you're going to catch up with me. But right now, I'm not going to let your bad attitude turn me off. I'm not going to let your bad attitude cause me to cuss you out. I'm not going to let your bad attitude mess me up. I'm not going to let your bad attitude stop me from praising. I'm not going to let your bad attitude get in the way of what God is trying to do in my life. Do I have a witness here, somebody? He went to God. That's the core of this message. He went to God, and the Bible said that he prayed to ask God for instruction to make sure that he gets it right. And what I say to us on Father's Day, as fathers, Remember, every day is a new day. We're reminded in uh, his word in Lamentations, he said that in chapter 3, he says, where he's new every morning, great is his faithfulness. Do I have a witness here? That's the word. He says, I'm new every morning. And so every one of us gets an opportunity to start new every morning. We get to start with the ability to say, Lord, I didn't get it right so well yesterday, but I sure want to get it right today. And so here we see the core is about, number one, praying to God when there is something that we don't clearly understand or something that bothers us or something that seems weird and out of kilter and then be able to say, Lord, I want to get it right and I don't know about you, but I have children. I know sometimes I've gotten it right and sometimes I haven't. But I am grateful that God has given me the humble spirit to be able to say when I haven't gotten it right, I want to be able to go to my children and tell them I am so sorry that I didn't get it right this time. But don't give up on me. Come on now. Don't give up on me because I promise I'm going to keep on working to get it right. And so I say to somebody out there, quit pointing fingers at other people and giving instruction about what they need to do. This is a message for every one of us. Though it's being given on Father's Day, it is for everybody to remember to ask God to help us get it right. Get out of our own way because he said, Jesus reminds us in Matthew 16, 24, if you want to follow me, you got to deny yourself. What does that mean, preacher? That means that some things you want to say, you can't say. Let me, let me try it again. Some of those things you want to say, you shouldn't say. He said, but if you deny yourself, you won't worry about what you get to or don't get to say. What you're going to do is follow him because he said, if you will deny yourself, then you can follow me. And the problem for many of us is we still in the middle of trying to shed ourselves of the issues of what we need and what we think and what our opinion is and all this other stuff. Manoah went to God and said, help me get it. And for every one of us today, I pray that that will be your mantra. If you're looking for one this week and you don't know what to say, Go to God and just ask him, will you help me get it right? Amen. Let's give God a big hand of praise. <laughs> Let's stand all around the house. If you don't know the Lord for yourself, I beg you today to give him an opportunity to be a part of your life. And I want you to know that he will not leave or forsake you, that he believes in you and that in every way an intimate relationship with Christ is still better than any relationship that we will ever have. But he stands with his arms wide open, really willing to do what needs to be done to help us undergird 
our lives in a way that we have something that we can hold on to that is strong and that is a great foundation and that's the power of God and his spirit. If you don't know him for yourself, if you have known him and you want to come back to him, I want to be clear, he's standing right here with his arms wide open saying, I want you to know, I don't care where you've been, I don't care what you've done, I'm looking at your future and it's really about that and I want you to know today that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's the God that we serve. And so I beg you, whether you're watching, you're listening, what, or you're here in the sanctuary, just know that that same God has got his arms wide open to every one of us. All we need to do is say to him, Lord, help me to get it right. Repeat after me, Lord, help me to get it right. Give me the instruction I need to get it right. Get it right. I'm going to say it one more time. Y'all do. Get it right. Get it right. Get it right. Get it right. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, y'all.